Hi guys, I'm Ryan. I'm 17 years old. I was in a coma for five months and 12 days. It was such a strange experience. I shifted between a dream state and reality. After a while, I could hear what people were saying around me, but I couldn't react. Something incredible happened while I was in the coma. Let me start from the beginning. In ancient Greek, the word coma means deep sleep, but patient's experience is very different than sleep. The body turns off consciousness to heal itself, minimizing brain activity. It's kind of like hitting restart on a computer. You get fed through tubes. Some patients are attached to a machine to breathe well. This machine feeds the oxygen your body needs straight to your lungs. So how did I end up in a coma? I remember a falling sensation, then the sound of hitting something before losing consciousness. Then I was sucked into a vortex. I spun while falling all the way down. Voices became distant. The worst part, the deeper the vortex took me, the darker it got. Suddenly, the spinning slowed down. I remember thinking, is this what death feels like? Then a deep silence and absolute darkness. Now I know that was the moment I slipped into the coma. Even though it felt long, it took just 15 or 20 seconds. I remember nothing from the first few months. I don't know how, but one day I began hearing voices. At first, it was all muffled. Sometimes later, they were normal. I could hear things happening around me. But soon, I realized the sad truth. I was still in a coma even if part of my brain was awake. I tried opening my eyes, but I couldn't. I wanted to say, I can hear you, but I couldn't move my lips at all. I wanted to move my hands and sit up, but I couldn't move a muscle. It was like an invisible force was stopping me. One day, a group of people entered my room. I knew from the way that they talked, they were doctors. They were talking about two patients. One was me, which meant that there must be another patient in the room. They compared our conditions. They spoke openly because we were both comatose. It sounded like they didn't think I would come out of my coma. According to them, there was no hope. It was the end of the road for me. They said the other patient would recover soon. They even decided which patient would take my bed after I died. I wanted to say that I heard them, that they were wrong about me, but it was just impossible. My mom and my girlfriend Piper told me what led me into a coma. My mom visited me every day. She'd cry silently while caring for me. She would change my clothes, wash me with a cloth, put lotion on my bed sores. Nobody in the whole world loves you like your mother. That's for sure. She'd murmur the same things as she cried. You didn't want to go to camp. I made you go so you would socialize. You just wanted to relax. You didn't want to stay in a tent. I'm responsible for all this. It's my fault. I wish I hadn't made you go. My mom was talking about a camp, but I didn't remember anything. Those memories were gone. Did I go to camp with my friends? What happened there? Did I fall off somewhere? I tried, but I couldn't remember being at a camp or anything that might have happened there. Piper answered all of those questions for me. One day, I heard her voice. She was right by my side. She was caressing my head. Please forgive me. I stayed away because your mom is so mad at me. I was just too scared, she said. She kept talking like she knew I could hear her confessing her sins. I couldn't remember the things she spoke about, but now I knew what had happened. We went camping on a school trip. When Piper was showing me a photo on her phone, she got a text. It said, will I be able to see you tonight? I took her phone and saw that the message was from a guy called Caleb. He was at the camp too. I should have asked Piper what was going on, but I was too angry to think straight. I attacked him and we started fighting. When Caleb pushed me, I fell down and hit my head on a stone. That's when I lost consciousness. Piper knew it was her fault, but she was here without shame. If only I could open my eyes and sit up.
I would spit in her surprised face. I would say, get out, get out and don't ever come back. It was impossible, but I knew when I came out of the coma, that's what I'd do. At first, I really enjoyed hearing what was going on around me. At least I felt alive. But the months of no improvement in my condition started to bug me. Even the doctors started visiting me less frequently. Who knows, maybe they weren't happy because they guessed wrong. I wasn't dead and the other patient was still in a coma. One day, while I was really bored, I overheard a weird conversation. I'd never heard anyone visiting the other patient. Now there was a man and woman on that side. The man said, I'm bringing the money back to your place tomorrow. I thought I could do it, but I can't. You should drop it too. She was really mad, speaking through clenched teeth. Nathan, you promised me I sold everything to get you that money. If you're not going to do it, then show me. I'll do what needs to be done. He deserves to die. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Was I dreaming? Was she really talking about killing someone in a coma? Nathan gave in to her insistence after a while. In a low voice, he said, This switch controls the oxygen. You can decrease it by turning it towards the left. Look, see that small device on your husband's finger? It measures heart rate and blood oxygen levels. If the heart rate slows and the oxygen levels drop, the alarm will go off. You need to turn the alarm's volume down before bringing down the oxygen levels. Nobody will check it. Even if they do, they'll think a nurse made an honest mistake. I was listening in awe. Was this Nathan guy a doctor? He kept calling the patient your husband. Was this woman the patient's wife then? Why did she want to kill her husband? But more importantly, was she actually going to do it? Suddenly, life was exciting. I was listening to them anxiously. During that period, my consciousness was coming and going. Sometimes I would spend days without hearing a sound. It was like drifting in and out of a deep sleep. Maybe, as the doctor said, I was at the end of the road. I was really scared, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fell into the vortex one more time. The sounds became muffled again. I spun endlessly in the vortex and completely lost consciousness. I clearly remember the moment I woke up. My eyes sprang open. I hadn't seen light in months, so I immediately closed my eyes. I heard my mom scream with joy. She'd seen my eyes open. She shut the curtains right away. I opened my eyes again. I smiled at her. She said, welcome back, sweetie, and started crying. The room was filled with doctors within 10 minutes. I wasn't sure I could talk yet. I felt like my voice wouldn't come out. I just kept on smiling. A few days later, I recalled a dream from my coma. This whole experience was so weird. In my dream, another patient's wife wanted to kill him. A doctor named Nathan was helping her. But in the next bed was a patient who was only a bit older than me, not old enough to have a wife. (laughs) I was now speaking comfortably. I told this dream to my mom, laughing. She froze when I stopped talking. Apparently, the guy in the next bed had died a month ago. The new patient had only arrived a week or two ago. The deceased patient's wife would visit on occasion. She would sit and stare at him silently. What about Nathan? My mom said there was no doctor named Nathan. But oddly so, there was a caregiver with that name. My mom couldn't help herself and she told the hospital directorate about this. This wasn't good for the hospital, of course. They said they would look into it, but they didn't do anything. They didn't even come to talk to me. But my mom didn't give up. When the police got involved, the truth came out. The patient in my room had been cheating on his wife. One night, he and his girlfriend were in a car accident. The girlfriend died, but he fell into a coma. The wife wanted revenge, so she planned his murder. She made a deal with a caregiver, Nathan. But Nathan backed out. He decided he couldn't kill someone, even in a coma. 
When she said she would do it herself, he told her what needed to be done. That's the part I had witnessed. One day, she came by towards the end of visiting hours. She played with the settings of the oxygen machine so that he'd get less oxygen. Nobody knew about it because she had lowered the volume of the alarm. Everyone had assumed it was just a coma-related death. The wife and the caregiver had to confess what they had done because of me. And they were both arrested. See how important loyalty is? Why did I and the man who died go into a coma? Yes, cheating. If he and Piper were loyal, none of this would have happened. I hope you found my story interesting. Thanks for listening. Bye.